One of the most notorious families in the Tudor period was the Boleyns, and during the reign of King Henry VIII, they would rise very high to the position of royalty, but would also be brutally brought back crashing to the ground with their downfall. The most famous Boleyn member was Anne, who became the Queen of England, and the second wife of King Henry VIII. Anne knew what she wanted, and she would not want to be like her sister Mary, who had become the king's mistress, and she wanted to become a queen in her own right. Because of this, Henry VIII had to get rid of his first wife, and also then split from the Pope, and he declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England. But the Boleyns would be linked to royalty in many different ways, and the daughter of Anne Boleyn would then also become the greatest queen of the Tudor period, being Elizabeth I. But who was the mother of the Boleyns, and who was the mother of Anne Boleyn? Elizabeth Boleyn was born roughly around the year 1480, and she was a member of the Howard family, who would be very powerful in the decades before Henry VIII's time on the throne. Around this time, England was gripped by the Wars of the Roses, and Richard III would be on the throne following his usurping of the crown. But Elizabeth Boleyn came from noble beginnings, and her grandfather was the Duke of Norfolk, and they were linked to the House of York, and Richard III, who rewarded the Boleyns with large grants of land and manors. Richard the King would be slaughtered at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485, and then the Tudor dynasty began when Henry VII, or Henry Tudor, came onto the throne. The Boleyns continued to move through different political power plays, as did the Howards, but Elizabeth Boleyn would, as a young girl, come to the royal court, and she was a well-thought-of and popular young woman. The Boleyns became known for their marriages, and Elizabeth, when she went to court, it was hoped would find a wealthy man and a powerful noble who would secure the future of the Boleyns and would bring in further financial help to the family. But when she got to court, she would marry Thomas Boleyn, who himself was a young, ambitious courtier, and the couple married around 1498. Elizabeth served as a lady-in-waiting to Elizabeth of York, the Tudor Queen, before she died. But then she had a number of children with her husband, and three of these would survive to become adults. Mary Boleyn was the eldest child of Elizabeth, and she was born around 1499, and she would herself become the mistress of King Henry VIII, and a woman who would allegedly sleep with the French king too. George Boleyn was her second child and her only son, who would be executed later on Tower Hill, and the youngest Boleyn child was Anne, who became the Queen. Elizabeth Boleyn, the mother of the Boleyns, was said to have been a very attractive woman, and following the deaths of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, she stayed at the royal court, and she would serve as a lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of Henry VIII. Catherine previously was married to Henry's older brother, Prince Arthur Tudor, who died at Ludlow Castle, but she was then married to Henry VIII to save money. But there were even rumours that Elizabeth Boleyn may have slept with King Henry VIII, as the king would hunt for mistresses inside the chambers of his wives as he would have a habit of sleeping with their ladies-in-waiting. This was himself denied by King Henry, and there were some historians that claim that this may have happened, but the references to the king's mistress named Elizabeth are, more probably, Bessie Blount, who bore the king an illegitimate son named Henry Fitzroy. But Mary Boleyn, Elizabeth's eldest daughter, became the king's mistress, and Mary would not endear her mother's love with the fact she was sleeping with the king. Mary would marry later a man named William Carey, and this was done to hide the affair she had with the king, but Mary would then remarry a commoner following her husband's death. And because she didn't get permission from her sister the queen or her parents, Mary was then cut off by her mother and was banished from court. Her son George and daughter Anne had better relationships with their mother, and Elizabeth favoured these two, and she was in charge of their education, and she was close with Anne. She taught her manners, and also a number of skills as to how to survive inside of the real courts, and how to thrive. 
She also taught Anne how to dance and entertain, and her mum may have given her advice as to how to deal with the king. Elizabeth would be with Anne during key times, and she went with her to view York Place following the death of Cardinal Wolsey, but within four years, Anne had risen to the position of Queen of England, and her mother remained by her side. When Anne gave birth to the future Elizabeth I, it's believed she named the baby after her mother. In 1534, Elizabeth gave the king a New Year's gift, and he gave her a velvet case with the royal coat of arms on it. But the downfall of Anne Boleyn was sharp and brutal, and it led to two of Elizabeth's children dying and being executed within days of each other. Henry VIII had begun an affair with Jane Seymour, and he had grown tired of the fact Anne Boleyn could not provide him with a male heir and son. But Henry was infatuated with Jane, and he asked Cromwell to find him a way out of the marriage. Cromwell came up with a number of charges, including incest, treason and adultery. But George Boleyn, Anne's brother, would be implicated in this, and he too would be executed for this. But the charges against Anne Boleyn were believed to have been false, and the same was said about George. But Anne Boleyn would be executed inside the walls of the Tower of London by a French swordsman in the May of 1536, and her brother George lost his head upon Tower Hill days before. This signalled the end of the Boleyn's family's influence, and the family would fall sharply from grace. Elizabeth's husband, Thomas, and her brother, Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk, gave no help to Anne and George, and they feared for their own lives. The two were even involved in the trials, but Elizabeth and Thomas would then retire from court and would then return to their home of Hever Castle and lived a quieter life. The Boleyns were not disgraced, but while she was at Hever, Elizabeth herself began to live her final years in quiet, away from the royal court that she had been a part of for decades. She would die in the years following her children's executions, but the cause of death is not known. She had a miserable final few years as she would witness her children being shunned and also condemned. But her husband had also been stripped of his titles and banished from court and Elizabeth's granddaughter, Elizabeth, would also be written out of the line of succession. Thomas Boleyn would briefly return to court before he died. But Elizabeth Boleyn, who was around the age of 57 when she passed away on the 3rd of April 1538, lived a life which was turbulent and focused around power and the monarchy, and she would be remembered in history for being the mother of the king's most infamous wife, and the fact she was the grandmother of Queen Elizabeth I, and the greatest Tudor queen would be named after her. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.